So Alexandra Lutians from Origin Design. Yes. So what does social innovation mean to you? Well, I think it's quite interesting to think about it from the design point of view. And it was really interesting listening to Jeff talk about some of the programs that um, they've undertaken in the UK. And when you look at it, I think it's a lot to do with insight. And um, what was interesting about the programs that he was talking about was he was using very often the people, or the, well, really the people that were often the problem to help solve um, the problems. So one of the great things about design, which is really about insight, about human interaction and insight, is you get to observe people, you get to encourage views in people, and you get to pull those views out so that when you're looking at a problem, the people that are absolutely sort of engrossed or immersed in that problem, or it is their problem, if you can use them to help solve that problem, I think you're, you know, you're looking at really innovative practices. Mm. Because so often I think what happens is that people, and you find this in all sorts of, you'll, you'll find this in marketing, you assume that everybody's got a problem and this is the answer. You don't actually take the time to find out if they've really got that problem yeah. and what they're looking for. And so quite often I think um, in business and in organisations people come from an area of assumption. This is the problem, this is the solution. And I think um, with social innovation it's about, and design's really good at this, it's really about um, using people for their insight about that problem to help solve solve things. And you know, we're so innovative. So what sort of things would that mean? You talked a bit about blogging mm -hmm. in it before. What sort of things would that mean in practice? I think, um, you know, and Justine talks quite a lot about this, um, about um, using design practices, which are basically practices of observation, um, using design practices to solve social problems. And so um, what that means is, instead, basically what I was saying before, instead of um, assuming the answer to something is something you've tried or done before, therefore, theory, theory, let's make it work in practice. You're, you're a, lot, a lot less solid about the answer and um, you're more involved in the process of discovery and the solutions based on that discovery. So I think it's using people to help them solve their own problems, which is again, you know, it's just, it's, uh, you know, and the thing about, um, you know, in answer to sort of communities and connected communities, mm -hmm. The amazing thing is, when you think about text messaging, you even think about Twitter, where you sort of throw this application into the community sphere, mm. and look at how it evolves, just because of the resourcefulness of people. So it's, it's sort of harnessing that as well, I think. How do we get more average people engaged with helping out with the community's problems and coming up with solutions? I think um, people are only engaged with things that matter to them. So you have to find points of relevance, I suppose. You're never going to get um, somebody engaged with something that they have no empathy for. So I think you have to find, and, and you know, this is this whole thing about, in some ways it's this whole thing about the long tail, which is that you don't have to do things at the big macro retail level. You can do things at small levels. And if you get lots of things happening at small levels, you actually can achieve yeah. something big. So I think, um, you know, this is where technology is so fantastic. Technology allows you to connect to people so quickly and instantly, well, quickly and instantly, it's the same word, but you know, so quickly and so in the moment that you can just harness small groups of people to, small, to, to solve small problems in quite a communal way. And I think that that's actually what technology has allowed us to do. So getting people who are actually in amongst the problem immediately part of the solution. So a guy broke into my house just between yeah. Christmas and New Year's and then I so I arrived home to have my home broken into and that wasn't, actually, it's not too bad to be honest, I mean obviously it's not ideal, but I was kind of like okay, okay, I want to find out who's actually done this to my yeah. home really and eventually I found the guys and the guy was 16 turning 17 and he turned 17 just after he broke into my house so he wasn't going through the normal district court which was, which was good so he's just on the fringe of falling off the edge really. So I went along to his family court hearing and, and got them to defer his um, appearance in court two, for two months by bringing him into our business and actually wow. hiring him as part of the crew and him doing community service work, working in amongst our team with the aim of getting him to a point where he might actually uh, kind of respect a few more people around him and think about wow. his own building. So um, is that the kind of thing you're talking about? You say getting people oh, who are in the problem is... I think that is 
fabulous. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that's about not going just with a surface assumption. Yeah. So the surface assumption would have been this person was bad, they need to be mm. locked up. But what you saw there was, in fact, there were circumstances that had created this. And if you can get to the root of these circumstances and actually change those or change mm. the belief systems, you can then engineer people and engineer society to be so much more productive. But so few people have the energy to take the time or, you know, just the goodwill, actually. It's interesting. Well done. Yeah. Everybody says well done, but I look at it like this. It's very, it's very, sim very simple to me. I look at it and go, if I don't do it with this one person, then yeah. there'll be hundreds and thousands of yeah. people, and then the problem's too big. Yeah. And then we have to accept that it's a problem we have yeah. to just deal with now. Yeah. And we don't want problems that we just deal with, do we? But, you see, the key thing there is, and that's why you're entrepreneurial, the key thing there is you don't assume and you don't do it the way everybody else does it. You look for... Um, you look for ways to change things and you look for what the root cause of things is and you get back to that root cause rather than dealing with something at the very surface or the at the end result. And that I mean, you know, that to me is about the insight of design and that's about the insight of entrepreneurialism. Thanks a lot, Alexandra. Oh, awesome. that's so exciting. Well done, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cheers. I'm really pleased about mm. that. We'll see how it goes. I love to hear stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll see how it goes. Because if it goes good, it's a pretty simple mission. If that works, yeah. I want to go to the MSD and just get them to show us all of the yeah. people who are 16 going on 17, who yeah. are currently in the criminal yeah. system yeah. and are about to probably yeah. reoffend, yeah. and just get that number. Yeah. I don't know what that number is, one of the exact yeah. number, like if it's 562 people, yeah. and then start the process of first yeah. and last name. But you see, what you did was you understood the person. You took the time. You didn't act like a system. Mm. You acted like an individual. Yeah, yeah. And that's huge. And, you know, we're all set up to act like we systems. Are. Yeah. But I think we've got the opportunity, and technology is really good for this, to act like individuals. And then you can bring about the change, I reckon. I'm so impressed with that. But see, how many, well people, how many people say, though, they want, they want to change things, right? They don't like yeah. what they see around yeah. them. I just don't think they quite understand yeah. that it might be the person who Google their home yeah. they can just go towards yeah. to solve a major problem. Because I, I can see the yeah. connection, and that's what I think the yeah. difference is. I don't think that people don't necessarily care. They just don't see a connection between them. They don't them. believe they can do it either. Yeah. You know, people don't have that belief in themselves. Which um, you, because you've, no, you, you've obviously overcome previously, because you're entrepreneurial and because mm. you've never let something get in your way or barriers get in your way. How many times do you hear in your head, can't do that, nobody else has mm. done it, or oughtn't, oughtn't? You know, that word, should not. Mm. That should be banned. It should be. Shouldn't it? Yes. Oh, good. Have not yet. Uh, have Replace not it yet. with have oh, not no. yet. <laughs> not quite, not? but soon. You know, and yeah. there's this absolutely fabulous book, sorry to go on, but That's just right. quickly I'll tell you this, there's this fabulous book um, and um, it's the answer, the answer to how is yes. And it's about the fact that so often we start at how. So we assume that something has already done, been done before and someone else has the answers. Instead of saying little, st and you see, and so the answer to how in your situation would have been bad offender, incarcerate, but you actually asked Let's not just look at the results of what that person has done. Let's ask the question about why they did it. So you ask the right question in the first mm. instance. And so you're not concentrated on handing your power over to anybody else. You're actually concentrated on asking the right question and solving from that point. Thanks a lot.